Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm reviewing. That's not true. Today I'm unboxing. That's the one. We could start again. It's early, but I'm not going to. Or I should just start again and leave it in the video. Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm doing an unboxing and rambling for Primal The Awakening from Reggie Games. This has been a long time coming. Too long of a time, some would say. A very, very long time. But I'm just happy that it's here on my table in all its magnificent glory. It's most of its magnificent glory because there's also a book and a small playmat off to the side. But I'll bring them on camera when relevant if I remember to do so. We'll go ahead and get into it. Of course, first starting off, we have our coffee shot. We are ready to go. And this is, like I said already, an unboxing and rambling. If you're new to the channel welcome aboard thank you for being here also uh, rambling means exactly what I, I i say it does which is, is i'm going to be talking about anything from primal why i'm excited about this game how much fun i have with the prototype why i'm eager and also concerned that it won't hold up to all the fond memories that i have of the game we'll also talk about any number of things i just played the dead keep from come on games simon games i just played the dead keep from simon games uh i like it I like it a lot. It's fun. I mean, I I won't do a dedicated review right now because they're doing paid content on the channel. Maybe I will do. Should I do a dedicated review of the other keep? Like, I need to play the second scenario. I've only played the first one, but I really enjoyed it. I really, I, I really liked. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Let's focus on Primal. We'll come back to other things later. Let's go ahead and take a sip of coffee because that's what it's here for. It's good. It's good. It's not bad. I'm trying a new creamer today. Dunkin' Donuts. Brownie, I think it was. I think it was brownie. Anyways, let's go ahead and get some boxes out of the way so we can go ahead and start with this unboxing. There's a lot to go through here. There's a lot of gigantic boxes. Let's move the core box. You know what? Let's leave the core box on the table. Let's not knock my coffee. This table's going to wobble so much from all the uh, vibrations of giant boxes. Let's start with the biggest and obviously the best box, this coffee. If this box over here, if this giant box falls over backwards, I'm going to have coffee all over the floor. And that's not going to be fun for me. It'll be fun for you as a viewer. You'll get to see some like action and drama and consequences. Uh, for me, the person who has to clean up the stuff, that's going to be a little less fun. So let's go ahead and grab this away. In fact, let's unbox this first because this by far is the most exciting box in the entire primal. We'll get to the core box next. But first, let's go and unbox this one over here. Let's get a little catch with my uh, knife over here to be able to get that, that sleeve off over here. Anyways, let's move my coffee. You know, I'll do coffee soon because I want more coffee. But this is Primal The Awakening. This is a boss battle experience from Reggie Games. Reggie Games previously before this did a MOBA style game. I don't even remember what it's called, but I remember like, it was well enough reviewed at the time, if I recall correctly. It didn't really get like popular, but it was well enough reviewed. Over here we have our primal, giant, most exciting box of all, the sleeves box. This is where you store all the cars when they're sleeved, I guess, because we got trays, we got sleeves. It's a, uh, I mean, I don't know what you were expecting. I was, I was expecting a box full of sleeves. They did not disappoint. So, so far, Primal Reggie Games has so far not let me down at all yet. I expected a box full of sleeves. I got a box full of sleeves with magnificent art on the box full of sleeves. It's pretty good art, but honestly, you know, Primal has been up there behind the little board game cosine. That's the original prototype of Primal. Do you know how many prototypes I have that are that old? Zero. I, that's one. I guess I have one. I have one prototype that's that old. That's the one. I couldn't say zero because that's the one. I have been excited about this game for a very, very long time because when I first played Primal, I didn't even like it that much. Like the first game, the very first game. I thought it was okay. I played the first game of Primal. I was like, you know what? Honestly, I'm not sure I was expecting, but... That was good, but hey, there's a reason I play games a few times before reviewing them, or at least try to as much as possible, and, and this was one of those times. I played the first game, I was like, that was okay. It wasn't bad, mind you. There's bad, which is like, bad games are hard to dive into multiple times, but I was like, it's okay. I don't know, like, this is a long time coming, there's a lot of hype and buzz and expectations, and then I played it, and I was like, it's okay. Ooh, this this dragon is like, ooh, ooh. It got like a raised thingamajiggy. Either that is a massively deformed box, but I'm pretty sure it's a raised raised dragon on there. But anyways, I played Primal for the first time and I just was a little let down by it. And so I played it again, and then again, and then again. And I really liked what Primal was doing. The gameplay just continued to grow on me the more I played it, which is actually funny because uh, the game I compare it to a lot, let me go ahead and grab my coffee, a game I compare it to a lot is Marvel Champions. I think it has lots of similar vibes to Marvel Champions, but it's not collectible coming out every single month. And uh, Marvel Champions is a game that grew on me the more I played it. And the first play was good, then better, and then better, and better. And now I have way too much Marvel Champions, and I haven't caught up in the last batches of Marvel Champions that's out there. Are they still making Marvel Champions? Is the hype gone? Is it over? Someone told me that they're making less than Marvel Champions. I haven't bought in a long time, so I wouldn't know. I probably should go catch up and update my collection. Not that I'm playing it enough, but either way, I'm spending less money on board games these days in general, so I don't mind investing a bit more into a game that I really do love, like Marvel Champions. 
or primer. Is there tape on these? This is gonna be so annoying to deal with. There's tape on these. This is gonna be so annoying to deal with. We got like miniatures right off the top over here. We're gonna do the miniatures last as usual because I like the miniatures last. I think it's better for the, uh, I don't know, the video and whatnot. Keep the, the best for last, so to speak. There's so much tape on this box that uh, right now you're just gonna watch an untaping. But anyway, so Primal, yeah, the first game was okay. Uh, the reason I compared to Marvel Champions, in case you're wondering, is they have the action economy system where you have a handful of cards, and the cards you have are both the cards that you need, but they're also powering the other cards that you're playing, which is a very similar system to what Marvel Champions does. That and the fact that you're cooperatively trying to take down a bunch of baddies means it has a cooperative system and a card-driven economy that is very similar to Marvel Champions, and that's where the similarity ended. But it was enough of a similarity to have me invested in the game as I learned more about it. Let's go ahead and find a place for these miniatures because I don't want these in the way, but I don't want to show you them yet either. So much table space. What do I do? Okay, we're going to create a little shelf from the other boxes that I previously had here. We're going to put this down on the mini shelf. There's so many boxes, I'm creating board game shelves out of Primo boxes. And then we're going to go ahead and show you what's in here because why not show you this for a second so you can get a sense of what's left. We got more miniatures and cards and a board. A board that is replaced by a... Playmat over here. We got the playmat. We'll show you all of that in a second. Let's go ahead and take this off to the side and get this all unboxed. So we got our board first. More technically our board second, third. What are we up to right now? We did the core box. We haven't even done the rules yet. This is all taped. Reggie. Reggie Games. You taped everything in here even more. Like on the one hand, I respect the uh, massive amount of commitment you have to making this hard to get into. On the other hand, I, I find this hard to get into. So there is that. You succeeded at your goal. If your goal was to make this... is it? Are you making me wait this long so I still can't play it? Like, this is taped down to the... Am I going to break things? Like, I'm worried I'm going to break stuff. I'm just going to keep plastering this tape to other boxes. We'll deal with that later. Is this taped down? Nope, we are good. We got our rules over here. This taped down? Nope, we're good. We're good. I feel like this is the uh, the um, am I cake means, except instead of like cake, it's I reach for I reach for the board. It's tape. The whole game is tape. The minis, they're all tape. Everything is taped down. Okay, let me make sure I don't destroy things here. Give me one second to make sure I just properly pry this out without cutting into anything important. The problem with cutting things on an unboxing is your focus is a little bit divided. And if your focus is divided, before you know it, you've cut into something that you can't uh, uncut. He says as he cuts rapidly through something that he can't uncut. But these look safe to throw out over here. We look like we're fine on the board. And we have our starting board over here, which is the primal board, like so. Is it double-sided? It is double-sided. So we have both sides of the primal board. This is the uh, the main side I've played on before. You have a boss in the middle, and you're trying to deal with taking down the boss. You're dealing with a whole bunch of things, from its threat counters to, uh, oh, what do we got here? Are these our decks of cards? Is this double-sided? This is not double-sided. We got this over here. And then we have our playmat instead, which... Uh, I assume this will fit in the box. I mean, it, it's not a huge playmat. It should be able to fit in the box just fine. Let's go ahead and open this up like so. There we go. We got that. And then we're going to go ahead and put this into here. And so we don't have too much of a mess to clean up later. Anyways, we have our playmat. So this is roughly the same size as the board. No, it's exactly the same size as the board, but it's neoprene and therefore it's inherently so much cooler than a regular board. I don't know when neoprene became the go-to for gamers. Like when, when did we sit there and decide a board is not good enough? A board is not what a game needs. A game needs a neoprene mat. Why? Well, because boards fold. So what will we do about this? We'll do neoprene mats. How will we get them to you? We'll fold them up and ship them to you. Or we'll roll them up and ship them to you. I mean, this one isn't because this one's small, but in other cases. So we're going to create folds and or rolls so that your board on the table no longer has a visible crease, but instead it visibly bends. Is that better? It seems more premium. Is it free? No, it costs money. Is it actually an improvement? Well, you have to store it. Is that free? No, you have to buy something to help you store it. Is this all a good idea? Not sure, but we're all going to keep paying for it. I'm not here to hate on neoprene mats. Lord knows people hate on sleeves, and I am all in the sleeve camp. That's not true. I'm mostly in the sleeve camp. I used to sleeve everything. Then I started playing more and more games, and uh, now I only sleeve things that have actually survived a few plays. If you're on, like, my third play of a game, I'm like, okay, great. Third play, by now, we can go ahead and keep that one or hold on to it, because that one seems like it's actually sticking around for some degree of time. And even then, I'm picky. Uh, Tenaris Adventures, which I'm on who knows what number play of that, I haven't bothered sleeving because... That's such an epic experience with so many cars, the sheer amount of work, and I have sleeves, I have sleeves for it, but the sheer amount of work it's going to take to sleeve things versus the benefit I'm going to get out of the sleeve content on that one, I don't think that ratio is there. And so for right now, Tenaris Adventures remains unsleeved. This, I think I am inclined to sleeve. That's lots of, lots of cars, lots of shuffling, a little bit of a spot on this. Is that from me just talking too fast and spitting? It's a little like, no, I don't know. It's a little, a little like wet spot, but it's not recency wet. 
It looks like an old wet spot. I don't know. Either way, uh, we got our boards over here. Let's put this neoprene mat off to the side. Let's take this board and fold it up with its horribly bad crease. And then we got our rule books before we get dive into our player boards. So we have the rule book and we have the campaign book. Two different things to go through. They are both ridiculously large. I mean, they're not large, large. They're just thick. They're ridiculously thick. Let's go ahead and dive into the rule book first. Starting off over here. We have our primary rule book. I'm not a fan of the binding on this, by the way. The binding on this just means that I'm worried it's going to break even as I just read it. But either way, we have our overview. We have a campaign mode. We have an expedition mode designed for players who want a quick one shot. I hope to be diving into a quick one shot soon because I need to remind myself how to play the game. I remember the basics, but like, do I have to read through this entire rule book again? It's, it's going to be a quicker read than you'd expect because, well, I've played the game. We have our equipment cards, our action cards. These cards over here, they're going to be both the economy as well as the cards themselves. There's a whole chaining aspect as well, as far as the colors go, and being able to utilize those and building your deck around your weapon. I like this game so much. It's so... We have our terrain, which was pretty good. That was fun. We have our, our various starter decks and equipments. I like this game. The prologue setup. I think I said this already, but I like this game. I had so much fun playing through this. And sometimes games hold up when you play them. Sometimes they don't. Uh, I just... um. Agamonia. I've been playing through Agamonia. That one holds up to my prototype experience, so I really enjoyed that. Aridia is going to be an interesting one when that shows up. I'm curious how Aridia is going to hold up. And it's interesting because Agamonia and Aridia have a similarity in that both of them came out around the same time and were compared, and Monster Hunter World and Primal came out around the same time and were, and were compared. And in both cases, one of those games that is less ambitious showed up well before the other and is easier to table. I think Agamonia is able to, easier to table than Iridia. I think Monster Hunter World is easier to table than Primal. But I think Primal is more rewarding than Monster Hunter World. I think uh, Iridia is more rewarding than Agamonia. But the more rewarding experiences are taking longer to get here, as evidenced by the fact that uh, Steamforge Games did Monster Hunter World Iceborne before Monster Hunter World, before Primal, the first campaign, ever showed up. And here we are, finally, over here. And then there's like, you know, I just watched the uh, Dice Tower reviewing um, Cyberpunk 2077. And they gave it a, I'm still in the middle of the review, so I don't have all the nuances, but I gave it a 6.5, 6.5, and an 8. And for me, if I recall correctly, I gave it a 4 to 5. I gave it an 8, effectively, an 8 out of 10. I like, uh, I like Cyberpunk 2077. I need to dive into it again. I haven't actually played the game since getting the final copy of it. But I've seen a lot of people say the expansions even make it better, so I'm excited for that. Okay, we got our component list on page 40. Do we have a component list on page 40? Is that what's happening here? I think I've been flipping through this book too fast over here. This book is not short. This is a homework assignment. You know, I'm flying out actually shortly. Right now when I film this, I'm about to go to PAX East. So I'm going to be flying to PAX East shortly, uh, which means I might, I might have a homework assignment with me. Well, I always have a homework assignment with me, but the question is which one. So I might grab, I might grab this one and see how it goes. We have our boards over here, our expeditions, our setups for the various characters. So a lot of this stuff is, you know, other stuff. Stuff that you don't have to necessarily worry about as far as learning the rules and all these things. But... Yeah, we got a lot of stuff here. <laughs> Way too much stuff to go through in the core rulebook. That is 118, 119, 121 pages long. When your core rulebook is 121 pages long, you might want to consider breaking it up into the rules you need and then the other things you don't need. Partially because 121 pages is intimidating, and we haven't talked about the campaign book yet, because we still have a campaign book to get through. So over here, if we go to this page, we got our starting campaign, we have our map of Theria, our camp campaign chapters, and another 119 pages. Are you kidding me? Reggie Games, this is like, on the one hand, congratulations for the amount of content you have. On the other hand, this is a homework assignment. Chapter 1, Part 1. The airship plows the sky as it takes you back to Alboria. Humanity's stronghold on Theria. Below you, the natural world is still reeling from the thunderous rumbling of Voltar. Animals flee to take refuge in their burrows and dens, and the trees are bent double with the ferocious breath of the wind. Far away on the horizon, you see the ocean. Following the draught on the outer islands, your ancestors sailed those waters for years before landing on the great central continent of Theria. This is the only green and verdant land that still welcomes life. You have always wondered what its secret was. I'm not, I'm not going to read more. That's all, that's all you got over here. Chapter 1, Part 2. We have Chapter 2, Chapter 1. Here we go. Chapter 1, Part 3. Chapter 1, Part 4. That's the sleeve guy. That's the sleeve guy over there. And then Chapter 2. So that's what we have as far as this starting as format over here. I'm not going to, I'm just going to flip through it rapidly to see anything else interesting. We have our various scenarios set up and stuff. Yeah. I mean, 30 over there. Is that, there's that 30 different campaigns. I don't remember. I, if I recall correctly, a campaign of Primal is going to be 15 chapters long. I don't know if that number's right, but for whatever reason, that's the number I have in my head. 15 chapters long. And again, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that's right. That might be horrifically wrong, but I remember that number. Now, that number could have changed over the years. That's also possible in general. But otherwise, that number might be a right representation, an accurate representation of how long Primal is which I like. I find that I like campaign games that are more manageable in scope and size and scale. 
Games like Wild Ascent, games like Agamonia, games like Primal, most legacy games. When a campaign asks you to play it like, you know, 40, 50 times, it starts to become like a homework assignment, at least for me, as opposed to something that I'm choosing to continuously dive into again and again. 15 long, I can do 15 long. Here we have our characters. We're going to just go through these rapidly over here. We have Darion with his great sword, Mira with her great bow, Thor with his hammer. We have Le Lejana with his sword and shield. And then we have the various enemy monsters. The Viraxan. Are these double sided? No, they're just art. Viraxan over here. We have the Karja, the Tormat. I'm fighting the Tormat. The whole thing that sold me on this game, well, amount of many things, was fighting the Viraxan and fighting the Tormat. Was it the Viraxan I fought? I think so, but I could be wrong. Fighting the Viraxan and fighting the Tormat were two totally different experiences. No, I think I fought the Diggorax. Did I fight the Diggorax? Is that how I fought? I definitely fought the Tormat, and I think I fought the Diggorax. Phylloxir, we have Morkros, Mor Mor Ozu, we have Jekaros, we have Huram, we have uh, Tar Tarugua, and the Awakened, which I assume is not... Oh, is the Awakened the big bad monster? Is that what it is? Do we have a big bad monster? I can't remember... Like, what's the largest enemy box we have? I don't, I don't know. I'll have to go take a look shortly. But first... We got other things to go through. We have these. These are going to be the various crafting areas you can go. So as you fight monsters in the campaign, which I never got a chance to experience the campaign, I only got a chance to uh, fight monsters. They gave us, if I recall correctly, they gave us two. I can't get this to uh, open. That's not catching, and I don't want to damage the cards. So if I recall correctly, they gave us two monsters to fight against: the Varaxis and the Tormat. They did not give us a campaign progression. They just gave us various characters and builds and stuff. There's two single shot adventures, basically. But in theory, you would go to the Herbalist over here, level one, level two. You'd be going to the Metal Forge and trading in your various weapons and gears. You'd be using these to go ahead and crafting, uh, you know, the Iron Bow or the Iron Helm. Or you go to the Fire Forge and then get the Voltaire Gauntlet. Or you go to the Coral Forge and get the Reefbound Helm. You're trading in various items and gear and all these things. Ooh, level three. We got more stuff on both sides. Or it's the Aryan Blade. This looks like the same on both sides, which is a little... A little sad. Why is it the same on both sides? Either way, these are the various forges. There's a whole lot of them that are going to give you things to go ahead and craft. Here's your campaign sheets over here, as well as your tokens. So we got all these tokens, which I might peel the shrink off of these, but I don't think I'm going to punch things, at least not on camera. That usually takes too long and just makes a mess. And I got 7,000 boxes to go through today, so uh, no uh, token punching today. Anyways, we got our tokens, all these. They look fairly basic. Honestly, the least exciting part of the game, visually speaking, like this is a wound. Like that's okay. Like I'm not complaining, but it's certainly the least exciting part to go through. We have our campaign sheets over here. These look like the the two different campaign sheets over here, tracking your various items, your skill trees, your materials you have, uh, you know, all the I don't know herbalist trophies, what you are in the chapter. So this over here shows eleven chapters. Why do I think fifteen? Did it change or something different? I don't know. Is, are there 49 different quests and 11 chapters? I don't I don't remember. Is it 11 chapters plus the three like boss fights? Is that how it operated? Again, don't remember exactly. For whatever reason, I have the number 15 in my head. I can probably check. I might have the rule book. I wonder if I have the rules in that box. I do wonder that. The rule book is very different. It was not 120 pages long. Just for the record. Anyways, just going to put all this stuff back because we got so much stuff to go through today that I don't want to spend too much time on any one thing. We have the miniatures, of course, to get to. We have all the expansion stuff to get to. We have so much stuff to get to. We're not going to show you everything. We're not going to show you every card. We're not going to... I'm just going to go through the base core, core box and then all the stuff and then kind of go through whatever expansion stuff I can without bogging things down too much. So, we got weapons. We have our greatsword. We have our flame. You know, let me go ahead and zoom in. I can, I can afford to zoom in a bit. There we go. I always do the other way around. We have our great sword, our flame tongue, flame tongue level two, level three, dragon claw level two, level three. I like how the weapons get cooler as you go through it. So we have our blood reef, blood reef three, summer blade. So again, just these are just basic weapons over here. They define the uh, the uh, cycle of your deck as far as the distribution of cards. So the type of card weapon you have does define what your deck is going to be like. So you have your your bows, you have some more bows, you have a giant hammer. You have the raw stone hammer, the sword and shield person over here, the brass wall, the ancient bow, ancient shield, celestial bow, celestial hammer, celestial shield. Like, look at these. They all have different, uh, you know, abilities in them as well. You have a round structure on our player aids over here. So that's what we got as far as our card distribution, which, I mean, there's so many more cards. There's so, so, so many more cards. But I probably can't get to them because they probably have tape on them. They have tape on them. This is just, this is, okay, you know what? You know what, Reggie? It was fun the first time. It was fun the second time. Now it's me trying to lift a giant pack of cards out of here to get to the tape thingy that you can't otherwise get to. It's in the most annoying out-of-place location. Dear Lord, Reggie. 
Like, I'm just sticking these on, on these things, like, trying to just open your box. And for those of you who want to keep, I keep saying Reggie, it's Reggie Games. That's the, the company over here. Okay, so we got this piece of tape on top of as well. That's going to go here. Let's deal with these monsters too while I have you, because I'm getting, I'm guessing that these also have tape on them. Watch them not have tape on them. This doesn't have tape. Oh, it does. It does. It just, the tape fell off very quickly on this one. I was like, I was like, of all the things. Okay. We got that in here. We're going to take this tape, put it down over here. We'll come back to the miniatures soon. I'm telling you, the miniatures are coming. They're definitely coming. But just not yet. Not yet. Just be patient. We got this. We got this. Let's put that back on that. Get to those shortly. This is going to go back into the box because it is ridiculously heavy. Okay. I may have broken things. Not like actually, but maybe. I think everything's fine. Everything's fine. Okay, cool. So anyways, we're going to take this out now because that's going to be the cover of that. We have our dividers, which I guess I'll just... I won't open these now. They're a little bit out of the way where they are. Let's grab our cards, our bags... I can't, I can't open all the cards. There's too many cards. There's too many cards. There's like, here, let me, I don't know if you can see over here. This is what we got as far as cards. So we have the cards over here, plus this pack of cards over here. There's a lot of cards to go through. I cannot go through all the cards. This unboxing will take forever, and we have so much more stuff to see. And again, let's be honest, the miniatures are the main reason you're here. So let's go through this over here and see what we got. Now again, game-wise, the basic idea is you, well, you know what? Let me get miniatures for you, and I'll, I'll talk about the basic idea soon. So we have these guys over here. This looks... Like, that looks like Monster Hunter World, right? Am I wrong? Does that not look like Monster Hunter World in the way they have, have that kind of little symbol? That feels like a Monster Hunter World symbol over there. Anyways, I mean, the game is clearly based on Monster Hunter World. I don't think that's a question over here. We have our stances. So we have the Digger Axe over here and a stance. These cards are, like, sticking together, which, I mean, not badly. They're just, like, I think it's just too crushed. They'll, they'll come apart nicely. They're not, like, sticky-sticky. We have our Dust Attack, our Burning Eye. These are all the enemies. They're low on art, but honestly, it's fine. The game is already ambitious enough, and I don't mind low art. Uh, low art can be better than bad art or art that gets in the way of the re reading. So I'm not complaining about it, but I do like the art that the game does have. So we have these, so these, so we got their character, Phylaxia. These are just a bunch of monster stuff. I, I'm not going to spend too much time in this, although I do, I'm going to open one more pack. I know I just said I'm not going to open all the packs, and I'm not going to open all the packs, but I want to show you some of these cards over here for the various attacks you have. Again, the game basically has... I don't want to, I want to talk about stuff and I want to go to head. I want to show you the miniatures, which is the problem because I want to show you the miniatures and talk about how the game plays and get more into it. But basically you have a giant monster you're fighting with the various um, heroes that you're using. Over here, so we have Relentless Assault. Reduce the stamina cost of all your red cards you play by one. We have Dragon Guard. Start, recycle two, and then you can go ahead and gain a face defense token. Very often you're going to be chaining cards in different colors. So you have a degree of chaining, you have a degree of trying to grab your items. The art on these cards looks great. Very low key, not too much in the way. These cards are one of the ones I really enjoy. It just it gives you a lot, a lot of visual representation without being like a full art card that's really hard to follow. Adrenaline shot, recycle. You can volley two over here. So you have all these different abilities. These I want to play this game. I want to sleeve this game. I can't take this on the plane to sleeve with me. That would be a big box. That would be a that would be a homework assignment. All right, I think that's all I'm gonna do for the cards. Honestly, there's so much more to go through, but. Realistically speaking, this is going to take forever as it is, and I don't want to make this take more than forever because forever is already plenty of time. So let's go ahead and put this back for now, and we'll uh, we'll come back to it. And by we, I mean me, and uh, I'll do that later because I don't want to do that right now because there's so much stuff to get to. So I'm going to put this away. It's got a decent enough insert. It does the job overall. And now let's grab some miniatures. Now there's two batches of miniatures to go through. We got these, and we got the giant box over here of all the characters. So this is where I get to show you some things because let's show you some minis. We, I don't know the names of them, so bear with me as I go through it. But we have this guy over here. This is going to be your first miniature. This is going to be the giant guy. And it's nice. The sculpting on this is pretty solid. Uh, it's got its grafted base, which I've seen better bases, but it's okay as far as things go. But yeah, he's cool. He's got a shelf. I'm going to call him Tomatoa because he hasn't always been this grand. He was a drab little crab once. But I bet he's happy as a clam. You know, he's beautiful, baby. You know, Maui got a little... I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Now, that's the big guy, or biggish guy. We have bigger guys coming. But then we need the small guys for the sense of scale. The small guys are going to be the various uh, heroes in the core box that you're facing off with. So these are going to be your hammer, your hammer and your sword and shield miniature over here. Again, pretty solid sculpting. I'm okay with them. They got looks like they're true scale more so than heroic scale. They might be heroic scale. The heads might be a bit, but they're overall, they're pretty good. They do the job. And they're going to go into the various sectors. You might have bushes and other things and stuff. Then you have your 
archer and your great sword over here so again two more characters to fight off with and again these are good i think the main miniatures are going to be like the big monsters obviously but you could have them in various sectors and you're trying to like attract the monster's attention you're going to have different like areas where you're trying to like hit on its flank and this point it's going to spin and react and turn towards you and you hit that guy he's going to spin back over here you shoot something with a bow and arrow the one the one complaint I had, if I recall correctly, was I felt the... Well, not one complaint, I don't know. A complaint I had was I felt the bow and arrow archer was... Let me put these back over here. Where do these go? I felt the bow and arrow archer didn't have the sense of distance that I would have liked to see from it. While a lot of characters in the, did feel different in the way they played, I felt like the archer should have more of a sense of, I don't know, distance that I didn't, I didn't get from playing with that character. But I did like the characters a lot in general. Let me see if I can get this guy back in here without messing things up. Hmm... Okay, this is going to be a problem, because if I can't put things back, we got to put this in here. Does it go in like this? I think it goes in like that. But it's not going in. There we go. Okay, this guy's in the way. So, let's go and show you this guy. This guy, the art on these looks great. If you've seen the art, this guy's like a blue, like almost electrical eel kind of situation. So he's going to be, again, one of the monsters. And one of the things that impressed me about the game is that the two monsters I had, and keep in mind there's a lot more monsters, so I don't know if they can keep this up, but the two monsters I had felt very different when you played as them. They felt completely different as far as the play style of how to deal with and attack the different monsters. And I, I love that sense of, well, difficulty or var variability. The idea that each one felt like its own unique challenge as far as how to take it down, which, as much as I enjoy Monster Hunter World, when I played through Monster Hunter World, I didn't get that same sense of variety. They did feel different, but not as different. They, they felt different, just not as different, which I just said. Let's go ahead and put this back over here and see what we have next. Let me show them getting this from the right orientation here. I think this is the right orientation. This is... I think I did it the wrong way. I think I did it the wrong way. Time to spin this about... Not really sure, but let's find out. Yeah, I did the wrong way the first time. All right, that's back over here, which means now it's time to start showing you all the fun monsters from this. So let's go ahead and start showing you some of the monsters we got in the core box. We still have so much more to go through as far as... Note to self, if you grab monsters from the makeshift shelf that you constructed, it may not go as well as you're hoping. How about, now that we did all that, how about we put everything back in the box and then start taking the monsters directly from the top of the box as opposed to waiting until everything falls apart and breaks. Although I do want those rule books back. You know what? This rule book's gonna stay out because that, that is reading material for later. Let's go and put the rest of these things back in though. We got those, we got this in here. Does it go there? It goes there-ish, close enough, I guess. We got this, which goes on top of that, I believe. That goes over there. And this goes on top of that. And then we can put the monsters back in because we got the rule book off to the side. All right, let's put the monsters back in over here. If they go. Sorry about that. And let's show you the monsters I was trying to show you. So we got these guys over here. This guy, oh, I like him. I like, let's show you the guy who I like less, the giant fly. This is the one of the monsters you'll be fighting off against. Again, don't know the names. And we have this guy who's like a giant, like almost like a mammoth, but with like a flower face. Flower face mammoth, who is pretty cool. I like it. I like the, again, the texture's great, the detailing's great, the bases are like the one area where it almost feels like the layered base is almost like pasted on. It doesn't feel like the same level of, of quality in my opinion. But still cool. Let's go out and see these two over here. So this guy's gonna be, oh, I like this guy, I have him, I have him, I have, I still have this miniature. That's what I'm saying, like, I still have this guy with his little like hammerhead situation going on. I like him, I like him, I like him, I like him. We're gonna put him back over here and then show you this guy who is not one of the guys I fought against. I'll show you the other one I fought against when I get to it. Because I remember what he looks like at the very least. I don't remember which dragon it was as far as his name, but I remember what he looks like. But yeah, these are, this is nice. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to dive into it. I have, I want to start playing the campaign. Uh, campaigns in general for me are always a hard thing to, to get done. Uh, there's so many games to play. It wasn't this guy. It wasn't this guy. It was that guy, I think. Now I'm not sure. Now I'm questioning myself. Maybe it was this guy. No, I think it was this guy. They added detailing to it. I could be wrong. I think it was this guy. But I think they've added a lot of detail to the mini since then. Like, I don't remember that front being on him, but also it could, it could be that it just wasn't this guy. Now I have to go pull out my old set and look because I really want to see, but that is going to be a giant monster to fight against, or at least one of them. Then we have the next one. Let's see, how does this go back in? This, this was in, I'm telling you, this came from here. There we go. Then we got this giant... Uh, Arguably, this is, uh, uh, what's his name? Oh my gosh. Uh, Godzilla. Ar arguably, this is Godzilla. I think that's pretty undisputed. 
Very Godzilla inspired. Did you watch the new Godzilla movie? I liked the new Godzilla movie. I don't think I was as blown away as many people were. I thought it was very, very well done. But like, I walked in expecting this like pinnacle of amazingness to all of existence, and I got a good movie. And as people have said, like some people, someone said to me, "Is like, well, it's a monster movie. Did you expect a good movie?" I'm like, no, it was better than I expected. But like, I thought it was gonna be like everything, and it was just good. It was a good movie. Like, I mean, I watched a lot of good movies. I watched a very few great movies, a lot of good movies, and then a bunch of movies that are totally forgettable. Honestly, it's not that different than board games. Lots of good board games. Many board games that are good but forgettable. And then a few great board games come out every single year. This, this has been one of the great board games. This is one that I've already seen people talking about their experience with this one, having a great time, which is one of those things, I've said this a lot as a, as a content creator, as a reviewer, I'm always very wary of like, you know, a game that I love. And I've, I've shared a lot of love for this game over the years. I've talked about how excited I am in so many different ways. And a game that I feel that passionately about, like there are people who will back the game because of the level of passion that I have for that game. And whenever I have my five out of fives, the games I love the most, I'm always very like, please like it, please like it. Everyone should like it as much as possible. And no game will be right for everyone. That is the, that is, that's the price of things. But if I give a game a five out of five and most people think of it as like, oh, that was like a three out of five at best, that's not great. Versus if the average score is a four to five and then a bunch of people had a five and five, that, that works, that checks out for me. So I do have that mindfulness of wanting the things I hype to be hype worthy, if that makes sense. So this is that guy over here. Keep in mind, by the way, we are 35 minutes into this unboxing, or 35-ish minutes into the boxing, and we haven't touched upon the expansions yet, which means we're going to have to go very rapid fire through the expansions to be able to make good on time of this one. So um, I'm going to put this away now, hopefully pin this on in the right order this time, seeing if it even goes on. The, the sad thing about these types of plastic trays is they tend to warp a little bit and have a slightly harder time going on the exact way that you're trying to get them into the box. But so far, we are fine on that front. Do I put this in here? I feel if I put this in here, like I, it could go in there. It does fit. I feel it's gonna warp a little bit, but whatever, we'll deal with it. Anyways, that's gonna be your core box of Primal the Awakening. Then the dragon will come and the dormant monsters will answer his call. I like that. I like the sense of like, you know, also sorry for the lighting. White in general on camera makes the rest of the studio get like all out of a uh, color portion. Like watch, when I, when I put this off camera, the lighting should already get a little better. There we go. Look at that. Like it gets a little more normalized. The, un the unfortunate part is there's more white boxes to go, so it'll only be good for a second. But the amount of white is a thing. Doesn't help that I have this white thing on as well. Let's go ahead and deal with the Primal Terrain Box. It's going to be the terrain for the box, as evidenced by the name, Primal Terrain Box. So if you wanted your terrain to be a bit more 3D, at the cost of, of course, having to get it out, well, that's what this is for. Because all the all these upgrades and luxifications you ever get on crowdfunding, they all have their place, but they also have their cost. Not just monetary, but game time, setup, storage space, all those things get in the way. Like, I love the Castle of Burgundy, like the deluxe edition from Awakened Realms, but I do find that... I only play with the full deluxe stuff, maybe one every four plays, and I mostly use the acrylic tiles the rest of the time, because the acrylic tiles are very, very cool, and I don't need to set up all the stuff and put it away and deal with table space every single time. So understand that before you back whatever it is you're backing, that not everything is always worth it. So we have our bases over here. Let's go ahead and show you these. We'll show you just a few of these. That's gonna hold your, your fighter. We have our rocks, rocks. I don't know why I said rocks. We have our rocks over here that just, they're rocks. It's a rock, it's a little hollow rock. It's a little hollow, which is, you know, it's fine. No need for unnecessary plastic, I guess, but it does feel a little less. We have our bushes. I like how the bushes curved, so it almost feels like the mini can like kind of hide in there, but I do like the bush, it's got a nice heft to it. We got those, let me put these back over here. And then we got more various terrain, like I'll just show you these over here. Like there we got those other pieces of terrain over there. Nothing too exciting over here. I'm here for the monsters, let's be honest. The terrain's nice, but I'm here for the monsters. Let's put this away. Does it go like this, or does it go like that? Why can't I not figure it out? This is the way it goes. They have divots in this one. That was your terrain box. Box one gone. We have one, two, three, four, five boxes left. I'm gonna go th quickly through these, because again, this, this unboxing is already long enough. We have more monsters, more monsters. We have more monsters. Oh, I like that monster. We have more monsters, and then we have heroes. So let me show you the heroes first, because let's get that out of the way. Can you see? You can see all those things on camera. It is what it is. I'm gonna show you the uh, the uh, Mount Havoc expansion, which is going to give you, well, heroes. So let's get that all the way out of the way so we can do all the monsters as their own little separate thingies. Now, I'm curious how Primal will do, because this is a game that all games, this is the, the hard part of being in any space. 
all board game companies need to keep selling board games to keep being a board game company. Uh, if you love what you do, you have to keep putting out new stuff so you can keep paying the bills and the, and the new people and all those fun things. But that does mean that at some point, Primer will get a reprint. I have to assume. It would be, be weird not to reprint this game over here. It's going to be very well received. People are going to want to back it. It was very expensive at the time, and people are going to be more confident doing, getting that if they've had a chance to play it or hear all their friends rave about how good the game is. So those are all good things over there. We have more uh, more stuff over here. Okay, but the flip side is they're also probably going to do more content because again, most boxes, most game companies do. That's just the way things work. More content makes sense. We have our gun person and our dual blade. Ooh, that's cool. I like that. Both of these are very cool. Like, look at these. Look at the art of these. That's beautiful art. It's beautiful. Like the art they do have. They don't have a ton of full scale art, but the art they do have is beautiful. We have tokens. We have more more forges, which is oh, it's right because if you have new weapons, you need new forges. That makes sense. That checks out. Anyways, uh, what was I saying? I was saying that, we got fun things over here. Uh, I was saying that new new expansion content. So games are gonna have to make new expansion content for, for their stuff, which means I assume we will see more expansion content for Primal at some point. These minis look a little, this one looks a little, oh, they, they actually have nice, they have nice detailing on the cape. Let's show you that. I don't know why you can see that, but there's some decent detailing on the cape, but other areas feel a little less polished, like the gun. Like the cape has a no level of lack of detail and the gun feels like it could be using some uh, some love. And over here, I like her. Her detail is overall pretty solid. So yeah, good minis all around. I, I just wish the gun, the gun feels like it could use a little bit more detail there. Anyways, then we have our weapons, which I'm going to open these because I want to, I should open armor. I didn't even show you armor last time. I'm going to show you armor now in this one. Anyways, my point is, there will almost certainly be more content for Primal at some point. Not just a reprint, but more content. I just assume that. Um, and I don't I don't know that, to be very clear. If I, I don't know that. They haven't told me anything. I have no idea. But I assume the way companies go, that that will be a thing. And the problem with that is I will want more content, even though I guarantee you I will not need more content. And that is where the uh, advice I would give you is not to get more content for a game you haven't played all the content you already have for. The part of me that lets myself make bad decisions sometimes, we'll probably go ahead and get more content for this game, even so. Anyways, I'll show you some of these dual blade cards over here because they're cool looking. So we have our dual blades. We have, oh, like, look at those dragon wings. Look at the dancing bones, the tidal waves. The art in this game is great. The moon blades, the twin blades. Uh, I, wish, I wish it could be like equipped, but honestly, I remember from O Sworn, the armory pack is a cool concept in theory, but in execution, I don't know about you, I haven't really touched the armory pack. It's not something like, it's just extra work. And it's like, okay, I could I could do it. Like, I don't know, I don't know. I, I like the idea more than the execution. This is where video games have one over uh, board games. The the ability to switch armor and have your character just swap. Red skill armor, spin, spined armor, reef bound plate, thunder armor, iron plate. Just look at these, all these various pieces of armor with all their abilities and all their stuff. Again, just lots of stuff to go through over here as far as all of this. And that's what we got for this expansion, which means we have four more expansions to go, mostly just focusing on monsters. I'm going to keep these quick because, again, just time-wise, this video is... I find unboxings... There are some people who do unboxings that are like two hours long. Board Game Coffee, uh, King of Average, they have some really detailed unboxings that are really worth going into if you want that level of detail in all the miniatures. Uh, but for me, I kind of do the types of content I want to watch. And for me, I find that length of, of video is more than I want for an unboxing. Honestly, when I hit 45 minutes on an unboxing, I'm like, this is pushing it. There are better things to do, like playing board games. Of course, you might be at work, at which point you can't play board games, so watching an unboxing about board games is not the worst thing you can do, honestly. I mean, I guess that depends if you ask me or if you ask your boss, but I'm saying it's not the worst thing you can do. Don't don't quote me on this. Like, I, I'm not responsible if you get fired just so on the same page. Anyways, let's go ahead and go through this over here. We have our ice expansion over here. So, the ice expansion, that's going to be this guy over here. Let's open the box. Let's deal with all the tape that's going to come out as well. We am not going to open... Do I want to open... I'll open one... Ah, there's campaigns for each of these. Ooh, there's so much content for this game. There's so much content. We're not going to, we're not going to open these. We're not going to open these. We're going to go through it. We have our Sikaj. Okay, that's what we got. Oh, are there two monsters per pack? Oh my gosh, I think I forgot that. So, we have two monsters per pack. Our Mamarak and our Sikaj over here as far as the monsters you have. Again, great art overall. I love the presentation. Now it's time to see what we got as far as miniatures once we take the tape off because this company likes their tape. Reggie, whoever you used, honestly, probably the same people that Kaman uses, and I don't like them either. Simon, Simon, I'll never... Just so we're on the same page. While holding a knife, I lunged to catch something. 
that is a recipe for things going wrong. For <clears throat> Fortunately, it didn't. But that is a recipe for things going wrong. All right, we got this guy, who's very, very cute. Now that I've recovered from the panic of did I actually hurt myself. I like this guy. Little otter tail situation going on. I like him. Fun guy. We got four more, three more boxes to go. And we got this, like, woolly mammoth type character over here. So here we go. That's as far as this guy doing a thing. Doing their thing. And that's what we got. Which means it's time to go to the next expansion box. And hopefully not killing myself on this one. Because that is... Fun. This is... I see the problem now. This does not... This... I blame them. I mean, I blame me. I'm, I'm holding a knife. I need to be more careful. But that... The way this falls out... I mean, once, I guess once it's back in the box, it's not a problem. But until it is, that is not the best. Okay, we're going to put these in here. And this in here. And then these in here. I don't even know how they store this over here. We're going to not worry about it too much. And just put it all back. As long as it fits in the box. If it fits... There we go. Okay. We got three more boxes to go. I'm going to save the giant... um. Eyeball sack monster snake thingy for last. We'll just go in order from top down. We will try to avoid cutting ourselves this time because honestly, that last time was it wasn't scary per se, but it was like scary for a sense of like I didn't think I cut myself, but like I if you're desperately grabbing something while holding a knife, cutting yourself is not a far conversation away from that. So we got our primal, the awakening, the nightmare expansion. So we got our boards over here are these two things. So I'll show you the Tarasca. Do we have more in here? How many do we have in here? Okay, we have the Tarasca over here. That's cool. We have our Zikoth over here. We have our Zekalith over here. And we have our Zithyros over here. So we have two. We have three. Was this like a Kickstarter thing? Like a pro, uh, an extra stuff? Because these two are the same the same type of thing. Just, you know, different colors. So, uh, interesting. But we'll go through that, which is why I see three miniatures over here. Which I now need to get out safely. I now need to cut this while doing it properly on the table. So as to avoid... That's there. And then over here on this side. And then we take this off like so. And we can put this back in like so. And then we can show you the stuff. So we got our, this is the guy who changes colors. So uh, I mean, two different versions of him. The Zekalith and the Zekarith or whatever it is. He looks fine. I'm not overly intimidated. I mean, like these monsters are different degrees of intimidating. There's no question about that. This guy who's like very, very Trinosaurus Rex standard over here. Like this is the kind of like the Gigantosaurus Rex, but you know, we already saw Godzilla, so I guess this is Tyrannosaurus Rex. I like him. Good texturing, good jaw. It's definitely a T-Rex jaw. Like, that's, it's got all the makings of a T-Rex jaw. And then we have, lastly, I need to put this back in here like so. And then lastly, we have this guy, who this guy is the most threatening. Like, he's, he's a giant ancient turtle who's come for blood. Like, look at that. Look at that guy. Come for blood, ancient turtle. He's spiky. I like it. Very spiky. That's going to be what we have for this guy, which means it is now time to go ahead and look at box number. We have two left, two boxes left. These have to go in very specifically or this won't, uh, 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 I don't like that. I don't like that, that has to be turned, I guess. There we go. I don't, the way you put this in, I don't love the way they do this. I feel like I'm bending one of their ears because I am, I am bending the ear. Or am I doing it the wrong way? I'm doing it the wrong way again, aren't I? Okay, so. If you do this the right, right way, does this guy go the other way? Put them in this way, like so. Is that what's going on? Okay. If I do like this, is that how this goes? Nope. Give me a second. We got this. We got this. I can figure this out without resorting to um, panicking. We got this. This is like this, I think. This goes on like this, maybe? No. Does it go on like this, like the first time around? It seems almost more so. This goes in here, like there. There we go. Okay, I was doing it wrong. There we go. It wasn't twisted properly. All right, we are good to go now as far as that goes. And this is going to just go on like that, hopefully not causing any issues. And now we're on to the next box. We have Primal the Awakening, the Feather expansion. How many baddies do we have in this box? How many monsters? You see that? Now, now I'm like curious because we had a box with two and a box with three, possibly four, depending on how you count them over there. So we'll see what's in this one over here. But it's got feathers. That's the fun part. So we got our Feathers expansion over here, which looks cool. Painting these, by the way, would be an absolute joy. I'm sad they didn't have Sundrop. Like shading these guys over here, that would have been cool as well, the level of extra detail. So 
We have our, our Forges, and then we have our Feather Creatures. We have our Pazes and our Nagaraj. Nagaraj, or not. So just two, unfortunately, not more this time around, which is a shame because I want more. Or are there more? Is this two sheets? It feels like it's, I can't tell. Is this two sheets? No, it's one sheet because we got the same art in the back. Okay, I thought for a second it might be two sheets. But we have over here this monster, which we'll take up for a second. And again, do my best not to cut myself because that is usually best practice here. We're almost done. We are almost done. We're down to one more box after this. Let's take this out. Put the boxes in. That is this tail situation. I don't love that. I don't love that. Let's pull this out over here. Okay. Here we go. And then take this guy. I don't I don't love how this is like. I'm like worried I'm gonna break things. Which ironically is meant to like make it safer, but that's that's gonna go away. I can't I can't be responsible for that. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and have this over here. So let's show you what we got. We got our first feather person, which is this guy over here. This one is very Jurassic Park, you know. This guy's like, what's it called? What's the guy said? Uh-uh-uh. Uh-uh-uh. Don't look back. Don't look back. That's not what it says. That's not what it says. It says I can't remember what it says. Anyways, we got this guy over here. So that's gonna be one over there as far as this guy. And this guy, I like this one a lot. This is very like almost like Chinese dragon inspired. But very colorful, very pretty. I like the tails, I like the mount. Got a good sense of a uh, threat to it. And that's what we have for this guy who goes in here like this. These boxes, I'm telling you, I'm gonna have a hard time making sure that I get everything right on these because I'm worried, I'm worried. Like this is in there correctly. Ish, maybe, probably. See, these don't, these don't go down well. That's the tricky part. You kind of have to pull them out and push them back in at the same time. It's kind of darn if you do, darn if you don't. And uh, now it's in, being folded. Like that tail, I'm worried the tail needs support, and I just took away the support. That's okay. That's what's been done to me my whole life, so, you know, it's fine. Anyways, let's go ahead and go through this over here, like so, and pull off this stuff here. And then, take out the Venom expansion which is very cool art in this one. And let's see what we got. Can we get three monsters in this one? I don't think we have three monsters. I think there's only one box that gave us three monsters, but I can hope, I can hope, because I don't remember what it was actually in the campaign, so I can hope. So we have this over here. We have our two forges for the various venom-based weapons. And then you have these over here. So we have our Hadar, our Hydar, and we have our Raikal. Just the two. Giant snake and uh, monster type thing. We have our cards, our various things over here. We're gonna pull this out again and do once again, the same surgery you've seen me do dozens of times. Yeah, I'm a surgeon now. That's that's what it is. Let's go ahead and open this up. I'm excited to dive into this. I I need to play more games. I need to play more games. I need to like sit down and just stop like filming videos and instead play some games. Although to be fair, I played games last night. Like yesterday was actually a good day as far as games game. This is not opening. Yesterday was a good day as far as games getting played. Like I said already, I played the Dead Keep, which was amazing. Really enjoyed that one. Uh, we'll talk more about that at some point. Um, I played. I played Bebop from Bitewing Games, the upcoming crowdfunding campaign. And then I played, there we go, there's the last piece. And then I played Imhotep. I played Arboretum, that's fun. Uh, I played Requiem. I played a lot of games yesterday. Let's go ahead and show you these over here. So we got our, there we go. I'm worried I'm gonna break these things, but either way, we got this guy. Again, good texturing, good detailing. Overall, I like the way these things look. They're, they got a nice gravitas and presence. And then we got our, this guy, who is definitely Gravitas and Presence, all Gravitas and Presence, giant python who's going to eat your face. I don't know, miniatures Miniatures don't get old. They don't get old, at least not for me. But they definitely, you have to like do more and more to be like great, because once you see enough miniatures, you're like, okay, great, what are you doing? What are you doing that's different or worth it compared to all the other miniatures that are out there? That's where the complicated question gets asked. And uh, honestly, these are pretty good. If only they would go back to the box, then we having to go through a two-step process to get them back in the box. But that's what we got. That is going to be an unboxing of Primal The Awakening. Uh, we'll be back with more unboxings because we got so many things. I have bad karmas in the Curse of the Zodiac. I have Seven Citadel. I just did the Dead Keep. I feel like there's so many of these big box games are arriving right now, and it's, uh, it's unboxing season. I do find unboxing the channel do go through a bit of a... Uh, oh, art book. I find unboxing the channel go through a bit of a, some months there's a ton, some months there's not. Not a ton. I usually try to not to do more than one unboxing a week, but uh, I do find that sometimes like months will go by with no unboxing, and other times I'll have one every single week just queued up and ready to go. Uh, there's a Mythwin unboxing that, I don't know when it goes up, but there was a Mythwin unboxing, unboxing that's done on the channel that, should, that, that Meg filmed that should be going up at some point, and then a bunch more coming from me at some point, so 
we have a lot of things. And then there's the Dead Keep, that the Dead Keep unboxing, which that was a lot of fun for me because that was a whole conversation about the nature of Zombicide versus um, versus what the Dead Keep is and how they're iterate, iterating on a familiar system. This is cool. I like the art. Oh, the Toramat. I like this. This is this is a nice book. I do nothing with these for the record. These are always very cool. I'm flipping around through it. These are always very, very cool, but unfortunately they don't translate into a, I don't know, I never really pull these off the shelf to look at, although my kids sometimes do, so there's that. Anyways, that is your unboxing of Primal The Awakening, which has been a long time coming. I am excited to dive into this one. I don't know exactly what will happen, but once I get my feet wet and into it, I will probably try to do a gameplay at some point because I think it's a good thing to have, and I will likely be doing a updated review at some point because again, I think that's a good thing to have. But until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.